In number 32, I think my strategy is going to be to change everything to sines and cosines. So what I'm going to have here is 1 over cosine squared x times 1 over sine x all over 1 over cosine squared x plus 1 over sine squared x. I want to point out that this is squared here, but this one is not. So that's something to, I think you could overlook that easily by mistake. So I just want to point that out, that one of them is squared and the other one's not. Now in doing this, I've created a complex fraction which looks really scary and it seems like we're going in the wrong direction, we're making it worse. But there's a very quick fix for this and that is to multiply by a useful form of 1. And in this case it's going to be an expression that's going to get rid of all these little mini denominators. So you have to ask yourself, okay I want to get rid of the cosine squared which happens here and here and I want to get rid of the sine and I want to get rid of the sine squared. And the thing that's going to make that happen is cosine squared sine squared. I'm going to write it over itself because that gives us the 1 that we're looking for. Remember that when you multiply by 1, you're not changing the value at all. You're just changing the way it looks. So in the numerator, we're just multiplying all these things together. We're not distributing, we're just multiplying. So the cosine squared on the top is going to cancel with the cosine squared on the bottom. And then we have two sines on top and one on the bottom. So we're just going to be left with sine x on the top. On the bottom I will distribute and cosine squared sine squared times 1 over cosine squared is going to leave us with just sine squared. And then if I do cosine squared sine squared times 1 over sine squared we're going to be left with just cosine squared. And hopefully you're all seeing where this is going. The denominator is just going to be 1. So we have sine x over 1 which is just sine x. Okay, number 34 is completely different. Um, this is going to be a combining fraction situation. And in order to do that, in order to combine fractions, whether adding or subtracting, you need to have a common denominator. So the common denominator here is going to be the product of both our, our existing denominators. 1 minus sine x, 1 plus sine x. So I look at the first fraction on the left and I say, well, how do I make the old denominator look like the new one? So the old one would look like the new one if I introduced a 1 plus sine x. And because we're multiplying that by 1, there's really no change at all. So it's just 1 plus sine x. Then there's a plus. Now how do I make this old denominator on the right look like the new one? Well, I have to introduce a 1 minus sine x. And that 1 minus sine x gets multiplied by whatever this is. But in this case, since it's just 1, we're going to write 1 minus sine x. So the positive sine x and the minus sine x cancel. So we're left over 2. We're left with 2 on the top. The bottom, we could leave it in this factored form, or we could uh, foil it, or more specifically, Florida, first and last only, which would be 1 minus sine squared. Well, 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. And if we use the reciprocal relationship, this cleans up to 2 secant squared x. The next two examples both involve combining fractions as well. So we're going to have to get a common denominator. Uh, this will be good practice from the one that we just did in number 34. So if that gave you difficulty, we get another chance. Um, number 36, let's see. Our common denominator is going to be the product of both the existing denominators. So I'm going to say secant x minus 1 
and multiply by secant x plus 1. And I'm going to ask myself, how do I make the old denominator on the left look like the new one? Well, that's going to require introducing a secant x plus 1. And then I go to the second fraction and I say, well, what am I going to have to make the old denominator on the right to look like the new one, which will be a secant x minus 1? Now, there's a little complication here, and that's because of this minus right here. I'm going to write the minus, I'm going to bring it down, and then what I have to introduce is not just one thing but a chunk, and that chunk is secant x minus 1. The reason I'm thinking of it as a chunk is because it is preceded by a negative, and that negative is going to affect everything that comes after it. And if you didn't write it with the parentheses, then you would only be negating the first thing instead of the whole chunk. So very, very important to think of it as a chunk and put parentheses around it. When I clean this up, I now get secant x plus 1 minus secant x plus 1 over the product of them both, which is going to be secant x minus 1 times secant x plus 1. Okay, so we have ne uh, positive secant x and negative secant x. So the numerator is just 2. Now I'm going to Florida the bottom, which is FOIL without the outer and the inner. So we get secant squared x minus 1. I think I need to just remind myself of this identity, which is 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. And then I can say, hey, is this, is this really one of those identities in disguise? And it is. If we say secant squared x minus 1, that's just the same as tan squared x. So this is all 2 over tan squared x. And we can clean this up in one more step using the reciprocal relationship and say 2 cotangent squared x. Okay. 38, another fraction example. Let's kind of proceed the same way we started the other two, which is to get a common denominator. In this case, it's going to be the product of 1 minus cosine x times sine x. And I'll ask myself, what is missing in the fraction on the left to get the denominator of the new fraction? So it's missing a sine x. This time I'm going to even I'm going to write it down. So there's my useful form of one, sine x over sine x. So the new numerator in the upper left is going to be sine squared x. Now there's a plus. And I'm going to ask myself, what is missing from the denominator on the right to get to this new one? And that's going to be the 1 minus cosine x. So I'm going to write it. 1 minus cosine x on the top. And on the bottom. And I'm going to have to FOIL here. So this is going to be 1 for the first. Outer and the inner is going to be minus 2 cosine x. That shouldn't be squared. And then it, <clears throat> it concludes with plus cosine squared x. So I'm seeing something right now, and that's the, the little telephone. That looks like an old school telephone. Everything inside of the telephone, sine squared plus cosine squared, is equal to 1. And so we have 1 plus 1 minus 2 cosine x all over 1 plus, this should be a minus, making a lot of careless errors here. <clears throat> I'll blame it on my cough. 1 minus cosine x times sine x. 
Okay. So 1 and 1 make it 2. So we have 2 minus 2 cosine x over 1 minus cosine x times sine x. Almost there. I know my hand hurts. Now I'll factor a 2 out of the top. And I'm left with 1 minus cosine x. And this is all over 1 minus cosine x times sine x. The 1 minus cosine x's will cancel. We're left with 2 over sine x. And if we use the reciprocal relationship, that's going to be 2 cosecant x. Okay, so two more examples that involve combining fractions and getting a common denominator.